from KSAT 12. The night beat starts right now. A family's worst nightmare confirmed tonight. The body of a woman found near DeFost Park yesterday has been identified as 63 year old Stacy Dramiga. She disappeared Sunday while walking along the trails. Tonight, her killer has not been caught. We want to show you the scene today as three different agencies comb through multiple parks along the Salado Greenway Trail. The Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar urging anyone who took videos or pictures at the trail, share them with BCSO. If you know anything that can help in this case, you're asked to call the Sheriff's Office at 210-335-6000. People are nervous tonight after two shootings happened within four days of each other at neighboring fast food restaurants, and one of those shootings was deadly. Yeah, and now San Antonio police trying to figure out if they're connected. As the night team's John Paul Barajas reports, it's unsettling for those who live and work in that area. It's getting out of hand, man. It's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? Like, this today was in broad daylight. It could have been kids out here. Two people shot in four days and no arrest as those who live near Ritterman and I-35 on edge. Today, this was the scene as police surrounded the Burger King and Taco Cabana parking lot at that intersection. A male that was shot here, he was shot one time. We did find uh, five casings in the parking lot. The male was shot uh, near around the groin area. According to San Antonio police, the victim and a man in their own cars got into some type of argument when a third person got out of a separate vehicle and shot the victim. The victim is expected to be okay, but that wasn't the case for the shooting on Saturday night. Another night when the shooting happened, I had my kids out here, you know what I'm saying? This is one of my kids right here, you know what I'm saying? We was all outside trying to enjoy ourselves, and I had to send my other son back home because I can't let him out to play, man. This is ridiculous around here. SAPD says Saturday night, 52-year-old Carlos Harlan Moore was on the Taco Cabana patio when he was shot and killed. This time, we're told police have no motive or suspect in that case. As for the two shootings being connected. It's a possibility, but without knowing more information about the shooter uh, or any other details, it's hard to say at this point. For employees at the Burger King we spoke to off camera, they said it's concerning that the shootings are so close, but that crime in the area isn't something new to them. Uh, you know for the man we spoke to on camera, You'll be thinking twice before getting something to eat. Are you ever worried about yourself getting caught in the crossfire? Yeah, so close? I am. We going to Taco Cabana every day, man. I, I, I fell in love with the, with the Cabana Bowl, man. I, it, ain't, it ain't that good. You know what I'm saying? It's not good enough for me to go over there and put my life on the line, man. That was John Paul Barajas reporting. Heartbreaking videos and photos of this little boy, four-year-old Benjamin Cervera. He died in August of 2021 from starvation. His father, Brandon Severa, on trial charged in his death. Day in and day out, he's begging for food, while Mr. Severa, the defendant, does absolutely nothing. You're also going to see, I anticipate seeing a video of him standing in the apartment, shivering, and saying, Dad, Dad, can I have some bread? You heard the prosecutor say that little boy begging for food at the time of his death. Benjamin Cervera weighed 28 pounds. Defense attorneys, though, say Benji didn't die of starvation. They say he'd always been small. And days before his death, doctors saw him and didn't raise any concerns. Benji's stepmother, Miranda Casadas, has been found guilty in his death, sentenced to 25 years in prison. The father, Brandon Cervera, facing up to life in prison if found guilty. Testimony will in this case will resume tomorrow morning. We are live streaming the trial and you can watch it on any of our KSAT digital platforms. New on the night beat tonight, a man accused of causing a crash that killed an unborn baby in 2021 has been convicted on four of the five charges that he faced. Constantino Tristan Coronado charged with manslaughter, two counts of aggravated assault, two counts of aggravated assault of a public servant. He was found guilty on all of those charges except for one of the counts of aggravated assault of a public servant. This case linked to a crash that happened on the south side of San Antonio back in May of 2021. The state argued that Coronado caused a crash on I-35 in South Zarzamora, and then while running from that, hit another car that stopped for an oncoming ambulance. The punishment phase set to begin in the morning, unclear how much time exactly he could spend in jail. Nearly four months after a father of five was hit and killed by a vehicle, San Antonio police think that they've arrested the woman responsible for this. That woman's husband is actually the one who gave her up. 
We want to show you Jennifer Elaine Aguilar. According to arrest paperwork, she's charged with collision involving death. According to the document, her husband told police that she drank three pints of beer before that deadly accident and told him that she was nervous that she had been drinking. Now, this is video here from May 15th after 45-year-old Ramon Gonzalez was hit and killed while he was walking along Culebra Road. The driver who hit him did not stop to help. A 29-year-old has been arrested after the Bear County Fire Marshal's office says he set his ex-girlfriend's car on fire. Rashad McIntyre facing charges of arson and harassment in connection to the car fire that happened over the weekend in Converse. The victim said McIntyre threatened her before the incident, and when deputies took him into custody, he was found with a firearm and an extended magazine with 29 rounds of ammunition with him. Deputies say McIntyre could face more charges for that firearm possession. For the fourth time this year, Texas has executed an inmate. This right here is 38-year-old Travis Mullis. Tonight, he was given a lethal injection at the state penitentiary in Huntsville. Mullis was pronounced dead at 7.01 this evening. He was convicted for stomping on and killing his three-month-old son in January of 2008 near Galveston. Authorities say that Mullis parked his car and sexually assaulted his son. And that after the infant began to cry uncontrollably, they say Mullis took him out of the car, stomped on his head. Prosecutors called Mullis a monster, while Mullis' defense attorney said he was severely mentally ill and had also been sexually abused as a child. Let's go to Uvalde tonight where city council members there slamming investigator Jesse Prado's handling of the Robb Elementary School shooting investigation results from back in March. That investigation, you might remember, exonerated all Uvalde police officers who responded to that shooting. It comes as the city receives a bill for $80,000 for work tied to that report. City council members say they've already paid $97,000 for the report, a report some were very disappointed with. I'm just very disappointed that this is the first time I got to see this agreement. I didn't know it was on there. Uh, this, I don't think this ever, was ever presented to city council for approval. Now, the agreement the Uvalde City Council members are referring to is one that Prado and the city's attorney, Paul Tarski, agreed to several months ago. The Uvalde City Council now deliberating Tarski's employment as a result of all this. Prado, an investigator with the, uh, from the Austin area that was hired by the city of Uvalde in July of 2022 to conduct that independent investigation into the Rob School shooting. Top 40 time. Exciting news for Trinity University here in San Antonio. The school ranked by U.S. News and World Report as the number 40 liberal arts college in the nation for 2025. That's actually 19 spots higher than it ranked last year. Representatives with Trinity say the jump represents the school's commitment to excellence and student success. Yes, to FitFest is not going to return next year. San Antonio Sports announced that its organization is going to be involved with the NCAA men's Final Four and therefore just can't do both events next year. Fiesta FitFest was a three-day multi-sport event that brought a lot of people downtown looking to participate in athletic events, and it started three years ago, but it's not going to be back next year. This is something that is near and dear to our hearts here at KSAT. We're talking about the Head for the Cure 5K. Yeah, we run in honor of our late news director, Jim Boyle, who passed away in 2014 from glioblastoma brain cancer. You still have time to register for this race. We have a link on our website right now, KSAT.com. And right now you can get 25% off your registration fee. Just use the code KSAT24. The 11th annual Head for the Cure 5K Run Walk happening this Saturday at 8 a.m. Providence Catholic School. It's right across the street from our KSAT studios. The proceeds from this event go towards supporting continued brain cancer research. I'm Dylan Collier on the night beat two lives forever intertwined. The jaw-dropping footage of a sheriff's deputy shooting a handcuffed suspect in the eye with a high propulsion pepper spray gun from just a few feet away. That's coming up. It is video that is difficult to watch and has not been seen publicly until now. A Medina County Sheriff's deputy capturing on camera the shooting of a teenager in the eye at close range with a high propulsion pepper spray gun. A warning that some of the footage that you're about to see in this story may not be suitable for all viewers. I'm going to hit him now. Hey, why'd you? Ah! 
deputy that you see there was convicted of felony assault. Prosecutors say the teen has traumatic and permanent injuries to his eye. Case that investigates Dylan Collier explores what led to that fateful encounter. <laughs> It's June 19th, 2023, after 10 p.m. As Medina County Sheriff's Deputy Jonathan Nunnemaker pulls over a BMW along Highway 90 in Castroville. Hey, shut it off! Shut it off! Stick your hands out the window, now! The man taken into custody... Do not move. Who am I arrest for? I didn't say you're under arrest. ...will later be identified as 17-year-old Brandon Sanchez. The vehicle was stolen from a robbery at gunpoint in San Antonio just four hours earlier and contained a large quantity of drugs, a pellet gun resembling an AR-style rifle, and Sanchez's girlfriend, who is a minor. What transpired in this gas station parking lot over the next hour will change the course of the lives of the suspect and deputy forever. Body camera footage recorded by a Castroville Police Department officer shows Nunnemaker becoming more and more agitated. Kick my door again, you're gonna get hemmed up. I didn't kick your door. Sit there and shut up. The deputy's attempts to inventory what's inside the stolen car, interrupted time and again by Sanchez, who demands to know when he'll be taken to jail. Is he seriously doing this? I'm gonna hit him. Can you hang on for a second? Ted, I'm gonna hit him. I'm done with this. Nunnemaker at one point retrieves leg shackles from his vehicle, but fails to put them on Sanchez, who continues to cause a commotion. Watch out! Flex, mother I dare you. Bro, chill out, bro. You just hit the out of my head. After the seventh interruption, Nunnemaker pulls out his department-issued pepper spray gun what the hey, and what? fires it into the handcuff Sanchez's eye from about three and a half feet away. Ah! The teen screams in pain, unable to wipe his face, as Nunnemaker calls for paramedics, telling a deputy supervisor minutes later. Is he chill now? I don't know. I haven't heard him kicking my windows. Well, you know, it's a great equalizer, isn't it? The distance from which the shot was placed was definitely way too close. Chris Heitman is sheriff of Marys County, Missouri, and runs the less lethal instructor program for deputies statewide there. You know, I can agree with a certain level of force, but that, that level arose way too high with, with that type of deployment, with that type of percussion weapon. Other law enforcement in Medina County agreed. Castroville police at the scene notified their chain of command. Medina County Sheriff's Office leadership was then informed and the case was handed over to the Texas Rangers. Less than a month after this incident, Nunnemaker was indicted by a grand jury. Investigators determined the pepper spray had been discharged from the weapon at a speed of over 400 miles per hour. The solution, measuring at 4 million Scoville units, nearly twice as pungent as the chip from the infamous One Chip Challenge. At trial in May, it took the jury less than an hour of deliberations to convict Nunnemaker on both counts of aggravated assault by a public servant. He was given seven years probation and is no longer eligible to maintain a peace officer's license. A lot of it was emotion. Uh, the officer was acting on emotion. He was, you could tell he was getting extremely frustrated uh, by the video. And uh, he acted out of emo emotion rather than the training he was probably provided. See, all that pain is by yourself. Lots of poor choices tonight. For case that investigates, walk this way. I'm Dylan Collier. Medina County prosecutors said Sanchez's permanent injuries to his left eye, including blindness that is unlikely to ever resolve. Sanchez confirmed this in a phone call with KSAT this week, telling us he is planning to have surgery to hopefully regain some of his vision. He's currently serving six years deferred adjudication in the San Antonio robbery case. Now, Nunnemaker's attorneys declined to comment to KSAT. The former deputy appealed his convictions to the Fourth Court of Appeals in San Antonio, but he dismissed the case August 26th. Let's transition to the weather situation right now, and Adam... I think we're all ready for some cool weather. Yes. Yeah, at least we'll get some cooler mornings later this week and some much drier, less humid air. That's the key. Let's get right to our weather headlines and a look at authority radar because we have a few lingering showers out there. Humidity drops. By this time tomorrow, it's going to feel very different outside because the humidity will be swept away. Temperatures, it's going to mean some cooler mornings. That drier air cools off more efficiently, and we're actually going to be a little below average for lows, 63 degrees. Friday morning, so a subtle little hint 
Small little taste of fall for a bit. Uh, tropics, we do have to talk about Tropical Storm Helene that's headed into the Gulf and making its way toward Florida. First of all, authority radar. Not much activity locally. We had one shower pop up in Comal County. And as it made its way toward Bulverde here, crossing over 46, it dissipated, not much left. But you go farther to the east, and these storms are actually sustaining themselves. A little bit of lightning associated with them. Those are those white lines, those cloud-to-ground lightning strikes. These are moving to the southeast, and if I'm timing it out right here, assuming they stay intact, it would make it to the shiner Hallettsville area by 1231 AM would be the timing. They're not moving very quickly and basically anywhere along Highway 90 there closer to 1230 AM. OK, let's talk about some of these changes. Look at our morning temperature trend. It's that time of year where we start to see those morning temperatures feel a little more comfortable. Notice the average low is 67. We're going to be there to a little below it Thursday and by Friday, 63 degrees in the morning. We're talking 60s for an extended period of time for the morning temperatures. Afternoons will still be near 90, but let's talk about the dew points. Very sticky out there right now. Dewey's low 70s locally, 72 degree dew point here in San Antonio, really feeling that tropical air. But look off to the north, Amarillo 46, Denver 37 degree dew point, much drier air. Even Wichita at 55, we're eventually going to be tapping into that drier air and it's going to move into town tomorrow evening. Here's our future cast for the dew points. And this is good to see now, tomorrow morning. It's still going to be muggy, very sticky start to the day. Lunchtime tomorrow, still humid. But then notice by tomorrow evening, say 7, 8 p.m., humidity drops off sharply with dew points down in the 50s at that point, And we dry out even more from there on out. And actually, this is going to be an extended period of a lack of humidity in the air. A persistent north wind will reinforce that lack of mugginess. And we're going to be in the pleasant cat category for the muggy meter, if you will, going forward thereafter. I mean, all the way through the weekend and into next week. Here's Tropical Storm Helene. Max sustained winds of 60 miles per hour emerging into the Gulf of Mexico where it should quickly strengthen into a Category 3 major hurricane, making landfall Thursday evening in the Big Bend region of Florida here, and that would be with some winds potentially up to 120 miles per hour and a storm surge, a peak surge in that Big Bend region of up to 12 to 15 feet. So significant major damaging storm. It's being steered by upper level high over the Atlantic and then upper level low over Louisiana, just funneling it with their respective clockwise and counterclockwise flows, funneling it right there into the Big Bend of Florida around here tomorrow morning, 75 and humid at the bus stop, 87 at noon. Uh, we'll be in the low to mid 90s in the afternoon, 94 locally, some 80s though for highs as you get into the hill country. Kerrville, for example, 87. Now I wish we could drum up some rain, but since we can't do that, at least we'll have more comfortable conditions. A lot of sunshine, those mornings in the 60s, afternoons near 90 and low humidity for a long stretch. And you're going to feel that. By this time tomorrow, we're looking down to the south, but if we were looking off to the east here, we could maybe see some flashes of light from some of those distant thunderstorms that are headed toward I-10 and Highway 90 east of town. I'm just looking forward to the low humidity. Hey, yes. step by step, right? We can't exactly. have it all at once. Exactly. We're ready. The Astros are pretty comfortable tonight. Yeah, huge uh, feat tonight for the Houston Astros. They clinch their division title with the win against Seattle. How they got the job done for the fourth straight year after the break. Plus, we have a couple of heated high school volleyball contests to show you. Stay with us. The Astros clinched the AL West with four games left in the regular season in Big Board Sports. But first, high school volleyball teams are knee deep in district competition. Let's take you to Paul Taylor Fieldhouse, where Harlan and Warren both come into the day five and one in District 28 6A action. In the first set, Talia Yancey spikes one off a Warrior defender for the kill. Harlan would dominate the first two sets. Then in set three, Warren took a two-point lead thanks to Taylor Thompson hitting this one off the blockers.
but Harlan would correct its mistakes and Liana Hamilton would help complete the sweep. So what's so special about this year's Harlan squad? I would say we're younger, so um, just finding people to step up and fill those roles, even being a young team. So I think we've done a pretty good job of stepping up and playing our game no matter what. Yeah, we try not to dwell on any of our mistakes because that just only hurts our team. So it's really like take care of business, shake it off, and get the next one. Have you noticed I don't call a whole lot of timeouts? I want them to work through it. But they do a really good job. We stay very calm, which sometimes might hurt us a little bit. But in overall, I think we just keep our composure and we play next ball. Some great reaction there. All right, another District 28 6-8 showdown followed. The Taft cheer team pumped to see their Raiders take on the Brennan Bears, who were getting hyped before the match. First set, Gianna Brown winds up for a big kill to set the tone for the match. The Raiders defense kept this one close as Faith, Faith Clavitter sends this ball back where it came from, but Mia Nunez was flying at another level as Brennan would go on to win it three sets to none. All right, shouting out a divine senior outside hitter, Yaya Rodriguez. Rodriguez's play as of late has been exceptional, currently leading District 27 4A in kills with 275 and 82 sets played. On Friday, Rodriguez had 34 kills in Divine's comeback win over Pleasanton in five sets. Divine is 3 0 in district play after that winning effort. The AL West has belonged to the Astros since 2017, outside of the 2020 shortened season. With the win today, the crown stays in Houston, and Alex Bregman delivers a home run in the first inning to give the Astros an early advantage. Seattle would string together three unanswered runs for the lead. Fifth inning with one on Jason Hayward sends one into the stands in right field for the go-ahead two-run homer, and Houston never looked back winning Four to three, the Astros are the AL West champions for the fourth straight year. Other score, uh, the Texas Rangers and Oakland Athletics are tied at three in the bottom of the six. Now here's a look at the AL West standings. The Astros seal the deal tonight, win the division. All right, on the other side of the break, we're talking Cowboys and Texans. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Dallas Cowboys don't have time to sulk in their week three sorrows because not only do they have a quick turnaround, they're on the road for Thursday night football at the Giants for an NFC East matchup with both teams playing behind one and two records. While the Cowboys are fully immersed in their week four prep, you have to assume frustration is lingering after their recent home loss to Baltimore after the game players made their frustrations known, especially the defense who now ranks dead last in stopping the run. We got to be detailed. We got to see how we can stop people. I mean, at the end of the day, this is about us stopping people. That's just what it is. We got to be out. We got to be credible and accountable every single play. And um, that's that's 60 minutes of football. It don't matter who we play. We got to go out there and, and, and be detailed in the plays. It don't matter who we play in this NFL. If we're not doing that, anybody can beat us. We'll see if those details improve on Thursday night. It's not so much of what Sam Darnold did, but so much of what we didn't do with, the, with being in the right spot and actually making the plays. The Houston Texans also coming off of a frustrating loss. Penalties and, as D'Amico Ryans just said, not finishing plays plagued the Texans as they dropped a 34-7 decision at Minnesota. There's plenty to correct in time for Sunday's divisional contest against Jacksonville. All right, one of the most intense rivalries in Mexico is coming to San Antonio, the Clasico Regio. And if you're a KSAT insider, you have a chance to win tickets for the match set for Saturday, October 12th in the Alamo Dome. Scan the QR code on your screen for a chance to win four tickets to the game. If you're not an insider, it's free to sign up. So do it. What a matchup. Yeah, it's going to be good. Game. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. Man.